Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the RESTful Tutorial Series. In the last video, we created our self-signed certificate and key file which contains the public and private keys. In this video, we will see how to use them on the server to set up the SSL. First, we need to specify for which URL we need SSL to be implemented. And this we can do using the user data constraint tag inside the security constraint tag in web.xml file. The user data constraint tag specifies how data is protected while it is in transit between a client and server. You can set a user data constraint tag to a value of none, integral or confidential in the transport guarantee tag inside the user data constraint tag. An integral value guarantees content integrity, preventing tampering of messages in transit between a client and a server. A confidential setting guarantees confidentiality, preventing reading of data by others during the transfer. We will use the confidential for our example and mostly SSL is used for confidentiality by doing some kind of data encryption. Let's add this user data constraint tag for our get user info service in web.xml file. So here we have security constraint and here we have defined our get user info service in the URL pattern. Inside this we will put our user data constraint tag and inside this we have transport guarantee which we'll put as confidential. Okay, so this was just to specify that we want SSL security for this URL. Now there is one more configuration needed for the server to send the certificate and the key file back to the client and this is done in server.xml file for Tomcat. So here we have something called server.xml file under servers section. So just open this. Now this configuration is added in one of the connector elements in the server.xml file. In the connector we define the configuration for SSL in port number 8443 for this. So all the SSL requests and response are retrieved and returned on this port number 8443. Now here we have something called SSL certificate file as an attribute to this connector element where we need to specify the local SSL certificate file which we should be send, sending back to the client and which we created in the last video. Similarly we have something called SSL certificate key file which will be set to the local key file which we generated using the open SSL and there are some other attributes also which are default attributes and we did not actually change them. Scheme as HTTPS, SSL protocol as TLS, all this secure, true, all these things we did not change so we'll keep them as it is. Okay, so our SSL configuration is done now. Let's build this project and test it out. Let's hit that URL, local host. Okay, you can see that the port number actually got changed from 8080 to 8443. Since we have specified SSL to this URL and SSL is configured in 8443. So a redirection from server is happening from 8080 to 8443. Now the the redirection, the configuration for this redirection is also available in server.xml file under port number 8080. So we have one more connector element here for port number 8080 and they have a redirect port attribute which redirects 
8443 so for SSL it redirects to 8443 so now if you can see here it's saying that this site's security certificate is not trusted so the client has got the certificate from the server but it's not trusted since it's a self-signed certificate but it shows that our configuration is correct and we are able to secure our URL let's proceed anyway and see what happens okay now it asks for user ID and password from basic authentication method which we had done in some previous video let's give the user ID and password yeah. okay so we are able to get the response from the server now the point here to be noted is that the user ID and password now would be encrypted and then sent over to the server so this is more secure way of accessing the service now this is it for this video we will see some more stuff of SSL in the next video thanks for watching